Hello everyone and welcome back for the uh, third installment, well actually the fourth installment in the uh, corn cob pipe series. This is the third modification video and this is uh, in some ways the most ambitious of the modification videos because the plan is to actually completely transform a corn cob pipe into, uh, into a, a different corn cob pipe uh, to, to really personalize it, make it something uh, very different, maybe, you know, you could argue maybe something a bit more uh, interesting. Certainly won't be smoking any better than it already does because these pipes uh, smoke just fine. But, uh, you know, just give it a bit of uh, a bit of an upgrade. So, to do that, I had originally planned on, on using this, uh, this pipe that I showed you back in the first video, which was just sort of an introduction to, to the pipes. And I had at the time misidentified this. I think I, I said, it, I, I did say it was a Mark Twain. And um, a stay-at-home piper actually corrected me on that, and I really appreciate him uh, him doing so. Uh, he, he pointed out this is this is actually a Rob Roy shape, and the Mark Twain is actually much bigger than this. Um, and I've confirmed that. In fact, this is uh, a Rob Roy from, uh, or appears to be a Rob Roy from the uh, from the Missouri Mirsham Legends series. Uh, now it is a second, so it could be something that you know was you know differently shaped, and this is the shape that they felt they were able to sell it as a second. Um, so it may, it may not even have been intended to be a Rob Roy, but at any rate, the, the point is, uh, this is a this is a small, relatively small bowl. And for the pipe that I want to make out of this, I, I don't think that this is really the, the best option at this point. So I've changed my mind. I'm not, I'm not actually going to do anything with this pipe. Uh, instead, I have an old, not terribly old, but a, but a, a previously smoked, uh, uh, country Gentleman, and I've told you I have several of these. This isn't one of the ones I've shown you previously, um, and I've actually already started to do some work on this. I like this one because the shank on this guy is actually fairly straight. And what I would like to um, to do is a um, an interpretation of a sort of nose warmer poker, you know, one of these stubby little pokers that are so popular these days, but try to do that in, uh, from from a corn cob pipe, in this case starting with a country gentleman. And I'll paste a picture in here for you to see the, the pipe that's actually uh, going to be the inspiration behind what I'm trying to do. Now, uh, I'm not going to make exactly this pipe, but uh, I, I looked through a lot of different images on Google. I think I searched stubby poker, and, and this is one that, that struck me as being, you know, relatively amenable to, to uh, a corn cob modification in terms of its shape, and also it's one of these more popular shapes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm using this picture sort of to try and scale, uh, because, you know, we, we don't have exactly the same size here, but one of the real distinctive features of this style is that sort of thick shank coming out of a relatively squat and, and robust bowl. So I'm going to be doing quite a bit to this uh, to, try to try to transform it into a pipe that is similar to this stubby poker. What I've done so far, um, and I've cheated a bit because I started, I wanted to make sure I had a bowl that I could uh, start this video with. Uh, it turns out, I told you it's difficult to get these stems out, but this was one that was uh, loosened just over time, and I was able to get it out fairly easily. Um, so this, this stem is, is no longer going to be used. We're going to make a, a new stem. Um, I also cleaned the bowl out quite a bit, and actually uh, took a uh, Fossner bit and ran it down the center and I should uh, I should have noted the size of that bit and I did not I'll try to remember to get that information in later in the, in the video for you uh, but the Fossner bit was was used to sort of I, I reamed it first to get the cake out but then to sort of f further ream it and just make sure that we were down to uh, just the, the, the pure bare cob there so you can see this is very clean you know almost like an unsmoked bowl even though this had been smoked uh, there's no insert, and if I can let me see if I can zoom in and get a better shot of the the interior here for you, because I'd like you to see the very bottom of the bowl. Um, it's all the way down to the to the bare hardwood plug there, and you can see that little dimple in the center. That's where the Fossner bit hit bottom. So there's this this has been completely reamed out back to to cob and hardwood. So the plan is to take this bowl uh, and put a hardwood extension on the side, which will be the shank. Uh, I am going to initially put the shank all the way through and then we'll cut it off. Uh, we can mark it and cut it off uh, so that it's going to be like the, the 
the first country gentleman that I modified where the shank will go through the wall but it won't go into the tobacco chamber and then we'll use pipe mud in the bottom to to raise the chamber to its proper level. Um, it's going to be a wider shank uh, so we'll have to do some countersinking in the, in the side of the cob here to make it fit. I'll use the same size shank passing through the wall but we'll countersink this a bit for the larger diameter bit to, to sit in and just you know cosmetically look better. Uh, and then to that we're going to actually fabricate a stem and we're going to fabricate this in two parts and I hope I haven't... there it is. So we're going to first off put a um, a bit of a spacer and we're going to make that spacer out of this uh, Delrin rod and that will be sitting between the hardwood and by the way for the hardwood shank I'm going to use a little bit of black walnut um, which is actually some local Pennsylvania walnut. Uh, so this will form the shank, not the scale. <laughs> this will form a small uh, shank extension and the reason I want to do that is I want to put a uh, I want to put the mortise into this piece of Delrin rather than into the to the wood and then I'm going to make a bit, a short stubby bit out of an acrylic blank and this is just an acrylic pen blank uh, nothing fancy here. It's got a you know red swirled coloring, so it'll bring some some color interest to this, and I think it'll contrast nicely with the with the walnut when it's done. So um, yeah, this is this is a bit of a challenge. We're going to be doing a lot of turning in this video, and as I've told you previously, I'm not really set up to video the turning. So unfortunately, you're going to just see a lot of cuts and then me saying this is what it looks like. But I will try to describe what I do at each step, and uh, hopefully. Uh, give you a, a good idea of, of where we're going with this. So the first step then is going to be to turn to this piece of walnut and turn it into a shank for the pipe. And when I come back I'll show you the, uh, the, the, the finished shank and I'll give you all the dimensions and, and take you through the steps I took to, to generate it. So I'll be back soon. Okay folks, bringing you back for a quick update. So far we've done a little bit of lathe work here on the walnut. Uh, you can see we've, we've turned it round. Um, I've got this section here down to the approximate diameter that we're going to have uh, for, the, for the shank itself and uh, that turns out to be I believe it's about seven eighths of an inch. We also turn this bit down here to uh, approximately a half inch in diameter and also a half inch long and that's going to be the part that's going into the existing hole in the cob. Now it's a little bit oversized right now which is fine. I can sand it to fit and I want to have a good tight fit in there. Um, so that's about as, as tight as I want it to be right now. Uh, but you can start to get the idea of what's going to happen here. So this is going to wind up slipping into that hole, butting up like so, and then we'll do a little bit of a recess in the cob that will accept the very ends of this and allow it to, to sort of mate up better so you don't see any gaps when, when the, the product is finished. Um, the next step then is going to be to, th this was turned between centers so it hasn't been drilled or anything yet, I just wanted to get that dimension on. Now I have a, a chuck that will grip on this and I'll be able to turn this without, uh, well initially I'll have some support here but this will be much shorter. The overall length of this part is only uh, just checking, I think it's a half inch, yes it's a half inch total. So it's going to be a relatively short uh, extension coming out to about where you can kind of see this line here. So I will truncate this and then I can drill the draft hole through and that draft hole is going to be the same um, 1364 ths I believe it is. Yeah, it's a third... Sorry, I'm, I'm double checking my measurements here just to make sure I'm giving you the same answers. Yeah, so the 1364 ths that's the hole in this original stem. So it's a nice wide draft hole. And I want to replicate that here because it works well with this uh, this cob. So we'll put a 13 uh, hole through here. That's just a, a pilot in the end to hold the, uh, the live center. So we'll run that all the way through and then we'll do uh, the final dimensioning of, of the outside of this and then we're going to put a small tenon, uh, a small mortise rather on the inside to accept the Delrin uh, insert that's going to be at the end. So I'll do all that and I'll bring you back when I've got the finished uh, product ready to go onto the cob. Okay, back for another quick update and please excuse the music in the background. I was too lazy to get up and turn the radio off. Uh, so this is the uh, bit of uh, shank that we're, we're beginning with and 
You can see uh, this was the part that's going to fit in here once we do some hand sanding. Uh, and what we've done, zoom in just a little bit here. What we've done is we've drilled through this with the um, 1364th bit to mimic the, um, the draft hole on the Country Gentleman. So that's gone all the way through. So we now have our draft hole established. And we used a uh, Faustner bit, this the Forstner bit rather. This is a 5 8 Faustner bit, and we just used that to make a small mortise here, which is going to accept the, the Delrin extension that we're going to put on. And that extension is going to be a quarter inch. So this is going to be a stubby little pipe um, by design. Uh, the extension will be a quarter inch, and then of course we're going to have the bit coming off of that, and the bit is probably going to be about uh, three quarters of an inch or so. Uh, is that, oh no, actually it's it's uh, it's an inch and a half is the, uh, the yeah that makes more sense. So that's going to be coming off of here an inch and a half. So you know the overall pipe is going to be quite proportional to what you would expect for a stubby poker. Uh, okay, so next step then is going to begin to use a similar process to create the Delrin. Uh, extension which is going to go right on here starting with this piece of Delrin rod. Now what I'll do is I'll actually create the uh, the end of the extension, uh, get it so that it mates up with this and then I will turn these together so that I'm sure that I've got a perfect uh, seamless fit between the two and then these will be epoxied together. Okay I'll be back soon. Well, welcome back folks we've uh, made a fair amount of progress on the Cob modification. Uh, I've completed this little walnut uh, shank that, that we're going to use to make the stubby poker. And this is uh, actually a very good fit, <laughs> but hard to get out actually. Um, what I've done is I've recessed the, uh, the opening here. And I basically did, did that with some of those um, carving tools that I showed you previously, and also used the Dremel a bit to. Uh, to, to fare out the edges of the, the circle. Uh, the little shank fits in there quite well and it's a little bit hard to seat but it does seat in there all the way uh, and I've, I've modified the opening so that it goes in straight which is what we're looking for. It does extend into the chamber as you would expect it to so we will eventually mark that and take it out and, and trim it because that's going to be the easiest way to do it since we haven't glued this in yet. So that will be flush with the edge of the bowl and then we'll use pipe mud to uh, to fill in the bottom the way we did previously when we were modifying the Missouri Meerschaum shank on the other pipe. Uh, I've also recessed the end as I mentioned in the last video and I've made the little Delrin uh, insert that goes into that and it fits well. And as you can see that's a nice tight gap free fit all the way around and that's going to form the mortise for our stem. So the next thing we're going to do, and all of this will ultimately be glued, uh, the, the shank will be glued in to the pipe, uh, to, to the uh, cob, and then this extension will be epoxied into the walnut uh, so that this will stay together permanently. Um, also I should point out that there are some minor fills that we're going to have to do around here. Uh, it turns out when you when you work on cob, it's something that does, you know, being a natural product and having some natural fracture lines in it, uh, you do tend to lose a little bit of, uh, you know, a little piece here and there chips out quite easily. So I've got some ideas on how to make a, a fill for that that were put in. And uh, if you recall the the pipe that we're going for, and I have it, I have printed out the picture that I showed you earlier. The pipe that we're trying to mimic is this guy here, um, and. We're going to actually try to stain this uh, darker black to try to mimic uh, the coloring here. And we are going to, as you can see, I've measured this out, you know, crudely measured it out, and we're trying to scale it to this pipe. Uh, but I'd like the overall tobacco chamber to be two inches high in order for the scaling to work out. And that means we're going to have to take off the top bit of this uh, right about there where it starts to darken. And I want to do that for two reasons. One is just a, an issue of the scale. But the other reason is that I, I want to uh, get rid of this sort of curving part here and make it a little bit flatter, make the edges a little bit flatter. Um, and I, can, I think I can get at that by just uh, trimming off the top of this. So we'll, that, that's something else that we'll have to do before we're finished. 
Okay, but the next step that I want to attack on, this is really the next really complicated bit, is I want to make the, uh, the stem. So we're going to make the stem out of this uh, acrylic turning blank, and I think that's going to be a nice contrasting color with the rest of the project, keeping in mind that this is going to be blackened quite a bit. So to do that, I've made a little drawing of uh, what the plan is, and this is how I do my, my lathe work, is I you know, generate these measured drawings, and these are crude, they're not, uh, you know, this is not drafting by any stretch, but what I'm doing is just kind of sketching it out roughly, uh, getting the dimensions approximately correct over here, and then the critical dimensions I measure out carefully over here and mark them so that I can use calipers at the lathe and, and try to uh, get those as, as accurate as I can. So the tenon uh, is going to be uh, 3 is long and it's going to be an 11 32nd diameter tenon and that will allow it to fit into this hole which is an 11 32nd diameter hole. Uh, to make that I'm going to use the tenon turning tool that I've talked about previously in other videos and uh, we'll, we'll get this set closely to, uh, to 11 32nd, maybe a little bit over and we'll do some test cuts to, to fit here. And once we're happy with the size, we'll bring that down to the full uh, 3 eighths inch length. Uh, before we make the tenon, though, we're going to have to round this. And that's where a bit of a challenge comes in, because for it to be... The diameter of this piece right here, I've marked off as 13 sixteenths. And if we could make this 13 sixteenths, then that would be, you know, really perfect. But as you can see, this this blank is, it's one inch from corner, um, it's, it's one inch on an edge. Uh, but it's going to be very difficult to get a 13 sixteenths circle out of that, I'm afraid. So it's probably going to wind up being a little bit um, smaller. Um, actually, I, I misspoke. It is one inch uh, on, on the diagonal. So the actual sides are less than one inch and they're pretty close to 13 16 So even if we took off the minimal amount of acrylic to get that, that cylinder, we're still going to be somewhat under 13 16 And then by the time we sand and polish that, it's going to be quite a bit under. So what I might have to do is make a small step down to go from the delrin to the stem itself. And I may make that out of another piece of walnut just to sort of add a, another visual element in there and to allow us to kind of gradually step down to the, to the stem. And that could be epoxied onto the stem or to the, to the dough and probably onto the stem. Uh, so we'll turn this into a cylinder as best we can. We will then create the tenon. Uh, we'll probably at that point compensate and make it a little bit longer than 3 eighths so we have the space to put that, um, that, that step down element in. And then that will define the diameter of the large portion of the stem here. It will stay that diameter for one half inch. And at that point, we'll put a sweeping curve in here to come down to the, uh, to the main portion of the stem and ultimately to the button. Now, I'd like the stem itself to be about a half inch wide. Of course, on a, on a lathe, we're turning a cylinder. Uh, so I'm not going to make this uh, any more elaborate than... Um, you know, one in, one inch, uh, one half inch extension out to about here, a slight curve, and then uh, a half inch for the rest of the, the diameter. Uh, ultimately, the this will be oval in shape, so the thickness of it is going to be at the most a quarter inch, and the width of the cylinder is going to be, or the width of the oval will be at the most a half inch. And then, of course, we'll we'll be filing that, and we'll be you know filing in the button and all of that. The total length of the the stem is going to be one and a half inches from the shoulder of the tenon out to the uh, the end of the button. We're going to have to drill through this. So the first step will be to make it round. The second step will be to do the drilling, and then the third step will be to uh, make the the mortise. Uh, I'm sorry, the tenon. So to drill it, we, we've got two diameters here. We want the this portion of the airway to be one eighth inch, and the reason for that is if we make it, I'm sorry, one sixteenth inch. If we make it, that's a one-sixth, isn't it? I wrote that incorrectly. If we make it any longer than that, forgive me while I reach for a pencil. Uh, if we make it any wider than one-sixteenth, then we're running a, a significant risk of filing through and, and making a hole out here. So one-sixteenth is about the right size for that. 
Uh, so what we will do first is we will drill from end, after we generate the cylinder, the main cylinder, which will be approximately 13 16 inches, we will drill on center a 1 16th hole that goes all the way through the entire stem. And then we will come back and re-drill that with a 1 8 inch bit that will only come in to this half inch point here. So that'll, that'll allow us a hole that, you know, it's sort of a step down from the main airway hole here, which is, is larger than 1 8 um, But, and, and that'll make sure that the draft, uh, that the air pathway is not too wide open, because we do want to have a little bit of restriction there, just so that we're not able to, to get this burning ridiculously hot. Um, and, and all pipes do that, they all have a step down in the stem. The other reason we need to do it is that this guide bar is 1 8 inch, so we cannot use anything smaller in this portion. And I've already calculated this is going to have to go into that half inch point, and now I'm realizing I'm probably going to have to make it a little bit longer uh, than, um, than what is marked here, which is 7 8 I'll probably have to increase that out to a, to a full inch in order to account for the little spacer that we're going to have here. But it'll still be okay because we've got this this curving portion here, which will prevent us from filing through to the to the one eighth inch uh, draft hole. So anyway, I hope that's all making sense. It's a little bit uh, complex, but I wanted you to see the uh, the design that I'm working on here. So I will take this over to the lathe now. I'll go through those steps and I'll bring you back uh, the blank that I've designed here, which will still be a rough blank that we'll have to to file to final shape but uh, it will fit in here and we'll be able to see how it, uh, how it fits in. And what we may wind up doing at that point is putting the, um, the little uh, spacer in there that I was talking about and turning that down on the lathe to, uh, to match both sides of this. So we'll, we'll take this out then, assemble the whole thing on the lathe and, and, and turn it in one piece. So. Anyway, that's, that's a little complex. I hope it was clear enough. Um, and I will do that, and hopefully when you see the three-dimensional object afterwards, and I'll compare it to this picture, you'll get a better idea of what the design is that I'm shooting for. Okay, be back in a minute. Okay, folks, quick update on where things stand right now with the uh, stubby poker conversion. So we uh, turned this, uh, this pen blank to round, and I did that taking off as little stock as possible, just, just the corners, just to, to get it round. And as I, as I mentioned, it, it is a step down from the, um, from the shank that we made, and that was expected. And to fix that, I'm going to put a small detail in. Uh, this is a piece of uh, hard maple, which will just give a nice light contrasting uh, color in there, and uh, I think it'll look good. So this is obviously not the final size. I've just got it set in there for now. Um, but we've got, so it's just a, a disc of hard maple that's been cut and drilled to uh, easily accept the tenon. That will actually wind up being epoxied to the stem. So it'll become part of the stem that'll insert into the, to the mortise here. <clears throat> the, the stem blank so far has been drilled through uh, 1 8 inch on this end. Uh, I'm sorry, 1 16th inch on this end, which will be the uh, where the button sits, and we'll widen that out in time. Uh, here, down to right about here, is has been drilled 1 8 inch, and uh, that's pretty standard and is necessary to accept that turning tool that I used to, to make the tenon. The fit into the Delrin mortise is good. Um, you know, it's a good tight fi friction fit. Delrin is nice because it's, it's real easy to uh, take in and out. <laughs> Obviously this has not been epoxied in place yet. But uh, Delrin is a little bit slippery so you can make a good tight fit and not have to worry about it uh, hanging up or catching. Um, you might have noticed that as I had this all together, this is not... Um, perfectly tight in there. There's a little bit of, um, the, the tenon is a little bit too long. So I've got to do a bit more lathe work on this anyway. I will chuck it back up and reduce this just a tiny bit. I'm just going to take a hair off of that to make sure that when these are together, we've got a really, sorry, uh, dog is uh, very active today. 
So we'll have a nice tight pressure fit and then I'll be able to turn this in place and bring it down to transition that ramp. Uh, apparently the dog wants me to come up from the basement. <laughs> So uh, I, am, I am actually going to stop for tonight, but uh, I just wanted to give you an update on where we are right now, and I will go quiet the dog. Talk to you soon.